Welcome to my card art. Always one of a kind, and it's to motivate you. Stay tuned, and please subscribe. Today's project, steampunk. And guess what? With jazz and a coffee shop theme, just a little something new. You guys know I, I like to recycle, and uh, I always think of something new to do. So when I received this mailer, I decided to recycle it. And henceforth, steampunk was the idea. You see my little container, this is just a little taste. It's one of my little things that I'm keeping, a whole bunch of little cutouts that I will be using later on for this project. And of course, Courtney paints, some of the gouache paint that I bought from her a while back. And I absolutely like it. And I'm going to be using some of these as well as other items to make my steampunk card. Now her paints I really like, as you could see, it's uh, put together with a very good care and you can layer them. And with gouache, the more you layer, the more shimmer, the more shine, the more of the color and the depth you get out of it. This one, uh, as all of her, uh, her paints with Courtney paints has little magnets on the bottom. So see, just like that. And she tags uh, the uh, names of her paints. And so you could see what they are, and she does this little sample on top, so it makes it super easy. And the magnet makes it very, very easy to store and stick to her containers. And of course, I put things back. You guys know that. <laughs> I like to keep things very, very clean and organized as much as possible. So for my steampunk card, I really wanted you guys to see how I'm going to be making these. I have my little doggy coaster and some water. That's all I have in there. Nothing special, just regular water. And I'm going to be using that and a simple brush to make my embellishments. I wanted you guys to see how a steampunk card is made from beginning to the end. So uh, at least the way I make it. And I didn't want to cut out a bunch of things from this video. And I didn't want to do a lot of fast forwards, only where it was absolutely necessary. My idea was to do a jazz theme. So this is the concept of this. And because... Uh, in the coffee shops, they used to have live jazz bands to entertain the, the guests. Uh, I figured, oh, this would be kind of cool. And way back when in the days from what I watched on the movies, a lot of people actually had um, singers in there and some of them would be wearing really cool masks. So therefore, it kind of goes together and the red lipstick and all these different things kind of made sense to me. So here I'm adding just a tiny, teensy, teensy, wincy bit of little water onto this paint because it goes on very, very smoothly and it creates a beautiful shine. And later on, you will see me add different elements to this card. So here we go. I'm using my little Lawn Fawn chamois, which is excellent for cleaning your brushes. It's very worn out, but as you could see, that dark color doesn't wash out because I've been using different kinds of paints but it's wonderful. It's very useful. And so I use it in quite a, a few of my videos. If you've seen it, uh, it's been lasting a long time. <laughs> so it doesn't fall apart. It does get dirtier and dirtier, even though I wash it all the time and the, the paint stays on after a while, depending, of course, on the paint that I use as well. But uh, I still like it and I still use it. So here we have this really cool jazz singer. Excuse me. Uh, he's not a singer. He's got an instrument in his hand. He's a jazz player. And I'm, uh, I'm just painting him up and uh, using this paint uh, for uh, a variety of different uh, elements. Like I have that clock there. And then I have that little coffee grinder too. And I'm also using Nouveau Embellishment Mousse. I like this product too. And you guys know I don't get any incentives out of anything that I use. I just use it because I like it. This one I've had for a while, so I'm literally just opening it up for this project, but I don't like to open it up all the way because I want to keep it as fresh as possible in the container. So check this out. One of the things that I did is I had this uh, cameo that I cut out and I'm adding this green shimmer paint and look how incredibly awesome it looks with a dark background paper. Now, my paper, as later on you will see in this video, is also a recycled paper. It came from a, a Christmas card collection that I received as a sample to purchase. But you guys know I make my cards, so I really 
am not a good candidate to buy Christmas cards that are pre-made or pre-printed because I make my own. I will buy hand-painted um, or handmade cards. I don't have a problem with that, but usually the ones that are pre-made, I really don't. Now, these are metallic rub-ons, and they create a really cool effect, especially on dark paint, but you can use it on light colors as well. Normally, you would use your finger, and you uh, you put it on there, you know, just dab it and swirl it around. But in this case, I really didn't feel like doing that. I kind of wanted to stay as clean as possible. So I'm using a paintbrush. And when you use a paintbrush with this kind of a paint, it all depends on the pressure that you put on your on your project and all depends on the type of brush that you have. So if you want to make it darker, you apply more pressure. Uh, if you want to make the paint appear lighter, you do less pressure. Here, since this is a grandfather clock, I decided to just give it enough shimmer and shine to kind of blend in with the project, but yet stand out as much as possible too. See, look, I'm holding it down with a tweezer because it does move around. And like I said, I try to keep my hands clean. But of course, towards the end of the video, you will see I wasn't very good at it. <laughs> I did make a little bit of a mess on my hands. <laughs> but that's okay. It's all part of the process. And by the way, you guys, if this is something that you like to see and you enjoy watching me make some of these things or you have a special request, let me know, please. If I know how to make it, I certainly will. Also, I appreciate your subscriptions and joining me here and cheering me on. And I love your comments and your feedback. So thank you, thank you, thank you so much. Here I'm just uh, adding different colors and shimmers and shine onto different uh, items that I have here. And more paint, of course, more gouache paint. And as you could see, I have everything from that clock to uh, another uh, jazz player here and gears. And I did not want to show you the painting process of that because that might get a little too boring for you to watch me, you know, make my brush strokes one after the other. Um, but I did, I did want to leave some of this in here so you can actually see some of the, uh, you know, some of the projects as I'm making them. So when I do make my cards or any of the creations that I do make, uh, I don't pre-plan every aspect of it. So some things you will see I will end up using, some things I won't. But one of the things I do like to do is just make it as open-minded as possible for myself so I don't get bored doing it. Here, this beautiful paint, I really, really liked how it appeared on the dark cardstock. And it's a blue orchid color that Courtney makes. And by the way, she does make her paint. So I always encourage you guys to support small businesses. You know, go find out about them. And if you like what you see, you can always get it from them. As I said, I don't get anything out of it. I just enjoy using what I buy myself and I enjoy uh, using different elements. So here I'm adding a little bit of that blue paint on the edges of that gear because I wanted to bring the colors together. I didn't want to have a whole bunch of colors just completely the same all over the place or take one big brush and start painting everything over the, uh, the other and, and all these different things. I wanted to really get as detailed as possible. So here is this mousse right here, another one that I'm using. And this is a kind of like a bronze colored one. And I do have this one open. I've used this one before. So I decided to use this uh, keyboard and paint it. But then I thought, hmm, why don't I just paint it right on top of my project? Now, some of these things on here, I will cover up with layers, as you will see. So obviously, you will not see the New Year's celebration because I did not want to make this a New Year's celebration card. So I am coloring in the keyboard right on top of my project. This way, I have a layering effect. See? Just like that. But I also wanted to hide the New Year's Eve. So I'm adding some more of that paint right on top. And this is a very good quality paint, so it does cover very well, so the words will not be seen. Besides, it doesn't matter. I will layer things anyways. <laughs> but I do like to have the background covered, just in case if I do have some other aspects of it that might come through. Now, again, I like this card because it had a lot of nice things that I already enjoyed looking at and I knew I could make. Here are some notes and a clock. And sometimes I will cut out certain embellishments two or three times just in case if I want to cut some of it up or if I ruin one. And you will see I'm going to use this clock again in my project here, but in a little bit different way. See, so I'm adding the glue, but see, look in the back. 
you see that um, shiny word <laughs> right there, all those words there? It says something joy and all this and thank you, whatever it says. <laughs> well, again, this was one of the sample cards that I received in the mail and I liked the cardstock. It was like a dark blue effect and I decided to use it for this. I didn't go too fast on the video here because I had a plan and I wanted you to see. Whenever I have small pieces in a project like here and I did not want to take it out individually to see through and, and come through, but I wanted to keep it all together, I apply a lot of glue on the back so all those tiny little pieces will stick and will not fall out later. See? So what I'm doing is I'm pressing it down. Watch. Look at that. You see what's happening? All that glue is squishing out. And that was exactly what I was hoping for because as you see, all those little pieces can actually come out of, of this set of, uh, of clocks. But I didn't want that. I wanted them to be in there and kind of look like an embossed look. But, you know, have all the pieces there, which was kind of hard to make sure I use the die cut machine and, and I use it so those things do not come out. So watch what I'm going to be doing. Again, whenever I make a project, I like to have it as, uh, as long as possible to last for the recipient. And so my goal is to make sure that it's got plenty of, of glue on it. See, so I'm holding it down and pressing and then watch. By the way, that little cowboy dancing pair I will be using as well. And I know, I know it's kind of different with a cowboy element, but I wanted to use it. And of course, here's my lawn fawn again, my little chamois that I'm using. And it's really good to clean your hand with. And if you get glue on it, don't worry when it's wet, you can wash it right off and it makes it super easy. And I just dry my hand. But look what I'm doing. I'm rolling the back of my paintbrush. That's the one I was using earlier to incorporate and flatten my project. And this way, when the little pieces of the glue come up, see right there in the middle, I just blend it in. And since this project is really cool with different colors, um, it will look just fine. Now here, in this case, if you want to, you can add glitter on it. I didn't want to add glitter because I had plenty on this project, but you certainly can. And when the glue comes out like this and you blend it together on top, like with this glue, it dries clear. So all it will have the effect is holding all the little pieces together. And then, of course, I clean my brush because I don't want to have glue all over it. So now I'm adding my little dancers. And, and like I said, I know what you're thinking. You're thinking, cowboys and jazz, what does that have to do with anything? But hey, you know what? I liked it. So I said, okay, I'm just going to use it anyways. And you'll see it, it kind of looks good. <laughs> well, it looks good to me. <laughs> you might be going, what a faux pas. What is she doing? But hey, art is art. Um, if some of you like it, if some of you don't, I respect it. And I certainly won't get upset if you don't like it. But I, I liked it. So here I am taking out uh, the little pieces for my treble clef because I wanted to make sure that I save some just in case if I use it for later. And of course, I did also cut out some tiny little notes. You will see me use that towards the end of the video. So hang tight. See? Tiny little things. And yes, I like details. I like layers. But since this card, I did not want to have it so thick and, and the layers so high that it will have an impact when it's mailed out. I just wanted to make it, you know, still layered, but not too high up. And you'll see what I mean by the end. So I'm kind of adding some color and glue to it and situating it just about where I think it will look good. And then of course, uh, just a slightly uh, wet paper towel. This is actually a tissue. I use tissues or paper towels, but you can use either one, whatever you have handy to take off the extra glue. And I always clean up the project as I go along. And there is my grandfather clock. Again, this is made from little pieces and I wanted to make sure that all the little pieces stay in. As a matter of fact, when that one fell out, I just put it right back in. <laughs> now, if you happen to lose your little piece or pieces as you're working on your project, take something else, put it on top, layer it. So it's not drastic, it's not a big deal you will notice most people may not even notice. See? So I'm, I'm literally just drying off the extra glue because here I didn't want it to seep through. But honestly, it would not have made any difference. Remember that little piano keyboard? That's the one they used earlier. There it is. I just plopped it right on top 
of the um, clock. And with steampunk, what's really cool is you're able to layer a lot of different things that old fashioned. And here is a cameo, for example, that has an outer and an inner section. So it's super easy to use. And I was trying to figure out if I'm going to be using it separate or together. After I painted it, I went to add a little bit of a different color. So I'm back to my gouache. And this is, again, what's really nice with the project. You let your elements, your paint dry, your glue dry, and then you can layer them. This is something you can't do in five minutes. And here I incorporated that blue color into the cowboy hats because I wanted to blend together and have some sort of a meaning that, that they belong. I didn't want to have something on there that looks like it doesn't belong. So here's that outer piece of the cameo. And remember, I colored them all in at once at the same time, but I'm literally making two different projects out of it. And I liked how it looked in the corner because now I had an inner cameo head, you know, from the girl there. And I was using her hair to make it look like it's a different color on the inside piece of the cameo. And the piece that actually came out from the inside, I put it on the bottom left. Look at those shiny uh, musicians. It's all with the creation of, uh, of colors. Look, the gold, the purple, the bronze. Look how they look on, on a uh, darker cardstock. It's really cool. And by the way, if you notice my, uh, my paper, it has that uh, certain look, the little raised bumps. And it kind of creates another element here. I'm just kind of feeling out where I'm going to be putting things. And I didn't want to cut this out because I really wanted you to see when, when somebody's deciding where to put things and how it looks. And it's a matter of preference. So even if your project, um, you decide, hey, I'm going to do this or I'm going to do that, and it doesn't come together exactly as you thought of it or you'll change things up, it's okay. It's your piece of art. There is my little coffee shop uh, grinder for coffee. <laughs> And see here, I'm trying to figure out where to put the other layers, and I don't like them down there. I was thinking maybe I can leave the top open, but I didn't. Lay out your project. Don't be afraid to modify or change things up. And of course, I have my note there that I really wanted to use as well. And so I decided to go ahead and put that right next to um, that girl's head, just because to me it looked, you know, it looked good. And I did go outside of the frame, as you see because I didn't want it to have everything in the frame. I wanted to have a little bit of a natural flow to it. Here I am edging the uh, musician so it can have a little bit of a, of a pop out effect when I put it on the card. And by the way, that color is called lemon sorbet, <laughs> just in case if you're interested. And uh, this, this is really cool because on a dark card, it comes out a very neat looking color. And remember, I already colored some of these things earlier. So it's not like I never color them and now they need the coloring. I just, I just added on things. Look, look how cool that is. That's what's nice when you use different media. Don't forget to combine them, let them dry, layer them, add them, smush them around. With steampunk, what's really cool about it is you combine a little bit of old, a little bit of new, something industrial looking. Usually steampunk will have some sort of a female on it that is really cool and very feminine, and yet it has a lot of masculine effects too. At least that's the way I learned about steampunk. <laughs> and if you learn it a, a little bit differently or a different way, that's okay. That's your steampunk. No worries. So you could tweak it. You can add your style. Usually it's in a darker color format, but I've done steampunk, believe it or not, white on white which was really, really different. <laughs> but it looked good because it still had the gears. So don't be afraid of playing with your colors and, and adding them on as you wish. Look at all that shine. I just thought it was really cool. And here's my other musician. And see how I layered it? And I added on top of the notes. That's okay. There I have that clock on the bottom. So I still have enough look of the base card that it still creates something pretty. And here comes the industrial look, that gear. I actually like to work with uh, gears because uh, of their different shapes. Uh, here, I don't have that many on this card, but I kind of make it look a little bit different. Um, but there are really cool elements to them, I think. Gears are really neat. 
So here I'm trying to figure out where to put it, but I really didn't want to put it in her mouth. <laughs> so it doesn't look like she's eating the gear. <laughs> so I decided to, uh, to put it right up there on top. And I left the little pieces in this gear to make it look different than the one below. So here I added it towards the cameo because to me it looked nice there. And with the incorporation of the colors, it worked. I have this cool guitar. And again, I did use uh, that embossed paper that I that I made. And you see, that it looks like little ostrich skins. That's the little bumps that you see on there. And I kind of like that effect. So now I'm deciding, uh, trying to figure out which which color to use for that guitar because I kind of want to make it look, you know, a little different. But I don't want it to really just scream, oh, here is a guitar right in the middle of my my art. So I just decided to use that color right there from Courtney's Paints. And as you see, very, very little water you need. This is not water uh, color paper. So this is regular cardstock. This is average paper. So it's not meant to be watercolored, but hey, the paper doesn't know that. <laughs> so I watercolor it. <laughs> and see now here, um, I'm just adding with a very light touch, just enough shimmer to really have that uh, cool effect that I think looks cool. See, look how easy it is and hardly any paint. Look at this, I just applied a little bit of extra paint, a little extra water, look at that, it just pops. Incredible shine. I mean, I could really make these things super, super uh, shiny and shimmery, but I really didn't wanna do that. I just wanted to create enough where part of the back color of the card comes out with the new shininess of the paint or whatever colors I apply. And again, here, those little pieces do pop out, but I did not want to pop them out. I kind of wanted to have that embossed look, so I'm adding extra paint, excuse me, I'm adding extra glue to it so it can, it can stay on and not fall out. And I decided to go at an angle, but I'm still allowing the clock and the hands on the clock to be visible. It's almost midnight, kind of like a Cinderella story. <laughs> but in this case, it's not, it's not. <laughs> so I have here um, different things that later on I decided not to use, you will see. And I have this, uh, this base that I'm using to mix my paint on and actually just apply this opaque color paint because I wanted a white color item on my microphone. That old-fashioned camera that you see on the right-hand side, I'm not going to be using it. I was contemplating on using it, and I will actually show you a way that you could use it a little bit later on onto this project and create a totally different look. So I will show you, but I, I chose not to do that. And here I'm just applying that, um, that paint to the microphone. And again, I'm purposefully leaving out some little parts of colors and black. Actually, it's more blue of a color, blue-black. And I'm letting it dry. And then because this is a stays on paint, I want to go ahead and make sure I'm cleaning it off my my format here, this little plastic thing that is is a is a, used to mix colors on. See? There is my microphone. That's the one I just colored in. And the paint dries pretty fast. By the way, the plastic piece was from Art Impressions, just in case if you guys are wondering. Um, they deal with a lot of watercolors, and they're absolutely fantastic when it comes to uh, to uh, having different kinds of stamps and things like that. So I like Art Impressions, too. <laughs> okay, see that? Okay, you see this piece? It's the same piece as the one on the right-hand side, but it has some of the parts taken out. So instead of using all of it, I'm only cutting a little piece off. And that's another tip for me to you, modify whatever you have or whatever embellishment you have, you can modify, cut pieces out, you know, cut it in half, whatever. And here, you see how a little piece of it is missing right there on the right-hand side? Well, that's on the left. I'm trying to figure out what time I'm going to be showing on this. That's okay, because Steampunk does uh, deal with older pieces. So I like that look. And I'm keeping my small pieces just in case if I decide to use it later. And there's that gear. And here I'm taking all the little pieces out. See? And then I'm just going to apply it with a glue. 
very easy. And again, steampunk, gears, broken pieces. It's all okay with this. All right, so ready for some more shine, of course. Okay, so here it comes. Don't breathe. <laughs> this material is absolutely awesome to work with. I enjoy it. But do not have your fan on. Do not have people coming in your room. Don't have the doors open because it will blow away so fast and you will not be able to find all the pieces. Look at this. It's absolutely awesome. It's called Gilding Flakes by Nouveau. I bought this from Tonic Studios and I love using it. This is a bronze color. I have it in gold. They have it in different colors. So the best way I use this for me is to dab around a little bit of, of glue onto my project and then press it down and peel away the extra pieces just so I can save and use those for wherever I wish to use them. See, look. It's creating that really cool bronze gold flake, depending on the color that you use. They're super light. See how I'm using even the smallest pieces? Tweezers are your friends. <laughs> and remember, do not have your fan on. It will blow away. And you see how that little piece I picked up and put it on the other, on the left-hand side, top left? Well, I wanted to put a little bit more on but it's, it's, it's fairly easy to work with this. And a lot of people will put it on heavily and brush it all off. And, and uh, you know, you will waste a lot, but, you know, it just depends on your project. But I don't like to waste a lot, so I'd rather just use it in, in a format like this for this particular piece. But I have used it before where I would heat emboss something. And then when it's really warm and a little glue is on it, I can use that and, and add, add that piece on or a bunch of pieces and then of course just brush it off with all the extras look how thin they are these are so delicate and so cool and see look this is this is how you can create with your art uh, a different look adding on elements or if you have an error like for example remember that grandfather clock if that piece on the left hand side I would have lost no big deal I could have used these gilded flakes and put one on there or put a gear or put some notes on there. Check this out. Look. See how it shakes? Look at this. It is so cool. They're super, super thin. But they're awesome. And they last forever. At least they do with me. I bought this a long time ago. And look how much I still have left. So it has a very generous portion. And up oh, there it is. I take a little piece off. Stick it right there. Look at that. By the way, you could use it... Um, as a, a topper for your nail polish too that's a secret <laughs> but you could use it <laughs> add some on, on top of your wet nail polish put some of that on there wait until the nail polish dries after you put it on there and then just use a top coat of nail polish and there it is there's your art for your fingers for your fingernails i should say here you're going to see some on my finger right there on the left hand side in a moment and i'm trying to save it in, in a second there See, I'm using all the little pieces, pressing it on. And I'm trying to save that little piece. Maybe I could reuse it, but nope. See, it just comes right off. No success. <laughs> it's like, okay, forget it. <laughs> and as you see, again, I have different uh, little embellishments that I will not be using. Like, for example, those um, those little um, pieces of, of stones. But here again, I'm just showing you the, the gilding flakes here just because I wanted you to see what it is. Those little stones I was going to use, maybe, you know, trying to figure out if I'm going to put those on the card or not. But I didn't. So here I'm just using um, a, uh, a really cool uh, pen. I've had this for a while. And what I'm doing here, as you see the words on there, it's the lighting is not the best right now. I apologize. Um, I have a ring light. And I didn't realize that the word coffee shop is going to be a little bit more on the dark side here. But what I'm doing here is I'm going over the words with this glitter pen. And it's a very slightly of a, of a glitter pen, but I like the color. So see, I'm just tracing the, the words in there just to create that little extra detail. So once you do look at the card or you do turn it or twist it, you will be able to see very well what it says on there. I'm going over, see, look, right there, I'm going over the arms of the uh, clock. And you can see it, it does make a big difference. 
and I know sometimes with uh, with lighting um, on 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 videos, it's it's kind of tricky, but it does make a difference. So if for some reason you cannot uh, create the kind of effect you want on your card, use a pen. If you cannot use, you know, a uh, a certain color paint or whatever, use a pen. Here, look what I'm doing. I'm adding on the strings for the guitar. See, now, if I would have tried to do this with paint, I think I would have had a hard time. But not with, with, uh, with a pen like this. So I'm just adding all those strings, and it's ever so slight. But again, it's the details that make something stand out. See, look. You can kind of see it. It's, it's a hint. And when you really see a guitar, see the strings? Those strings are not going to pop out at you right away, but you know it's there. So that's what I wanted to do. I just wanted to add those on. Just to give it that extra touch. And don't forget those little extra touches that you put in the extra love, the detail. That's what makes your project. See, it's it's good. It's good. It's not done yet. There it is. Okay. So here's where I'm demonstrating. See that old-fashioned camera? All right. So you could technically take a frame just like this, like a white piece of paper, whatever, and add on some more things towards the outside. And you could frame this in and make it an actual picture. Look how cool that looks. I actually like that. <laughs> I didn't do that, but I, I do like it. You can add another gear on the right-hand side or a left-hand side or whatever. And you certainly can create an image like this, frame it, and then give it as a gift. See? And you, you can use that piece just like as it is, but I didn't, I didn't choose to do this. I went with, uh, with a little bit of a different idea. See? You see the, the raised bumps, the arm of the... Um, the clock in the coffee shop, you see how it shimmers and you can see all the different words. And I'm not done. Don't, don't go away yet because, uh, like I said, I'm adding on some more things. <laughs> it's just not quite ready yet. So, like I said, it's not done yet. So I was like looking at this thing and I'm like, hmm, it's missing something. Can you see what it's missing? To me, it was missing something. It was missing a message. So here from this, uh, this set of die that I got as a, as a gift from, from my daughter, I decided to go ahead and cut out the letters one by one. And they uh, worked great. I used a leftover piece of paper and I put the word on there, the words on there, celebrate now. And I figured that's it. I mean, when you're going to a coffee shop and you have a beautiful band with, with awesome jazz music playing and you have a, a singer, you know, just kind of like going do up, you know, whatever they're saying during the, the music. It's like, wow, you're kind of celebrating and you're in the moment. So celebrate now just worked. And I said, that's what I needed on here. That kind of works now, but I'm still not done. You know me in details. <laughs> so <laughs> no, no, not done at all. So those little pieces, remember, tiny little notes. Here we go. I wanted to complete the card the best way possible by adding those extra touches. So a tiny little bit of glue. And I put that right in the middle there. See? And you might say, nah, you didn't need that. But when someone looks at it up close, it does make a big difference. And I have this, uh, this quick stick that I really like. It's kind of sticky. And you didn't even see those over there, I don't think, right? <laughs> <laughs> those notes on the right, I kind of put in there because uh, I was uh, uh, trying to figure out where I'm going, going to be layering them and where I'm going to be putting them there. But it almost blends in. But later on, I will have uh, surprise photos at the end so you can see how they worked out really, really well, I thought. Look, see? I like this tool because it picks up things very easily. And it's got the little pokey end on one side and then the sticky end on the other side. And see those notes? They're the same one. And of course, I have glue on my fingernails. <laughs> oh, well, <laughs> I, I will have glue everywhere. <laughs> but those two notes are the same, but it depends how you put them on your project. You can make them look different. At least the appearance of difference. But you see how the steampunk kind of came along and with the different colors added together? And to me, this is a very happy card. It's kind of you know, the more you look at it, the more little elements you get to see. And those are the cards I like to make. 
you know, when you stare at them for a long time, you think you saw everything and go, oh, nope, oh, there is one more thing. <laughs> and you're like, oh, that's right. I, you know, I missed that. Look at that little note. It was so hard to pick up. My goodness. It almost flew away. Tiny little thing. But it works really well for this project. And if you have too much glue, wipe it off. Remember, on your cards, uh, there really is no mistake you can make. At least no mistake you can correct. <laughs> you can't correct, I should say. Wait a minute. <laughs> Let me try this again. There is no mistake that you can't correct. Because even if you goof, it's okay. You'll be able to fix it. And you know, these are all motivational videos. So if you don't have something like this, you don't have a jazz theme uh, items that you could put on there, don't worry. You get the idea. Just use something different. And see that one? It's kind of cool, but I didn't want to cover it up. There was really no place to put it that I thought would work. And I said, oh, never mind. I'm just going to not use it now. It's really cool, embossed, cool texture. I can use it for, for, I can use this for something else later. And of course, one day, I always hope that my card art will become your card art. And I always hope to motivate you and give you ideas to have you get inspired and don't forget, whenever you send out cards and things like this, people love it and you make a lot of folks happy. It's so enjoyable. So here are some close-up pics for you guys. Enjoy these. And I wanted to say thank you. Thank you for joining my channel here and subscribing. And I truly appreciate you being here. Please leave a comment below. I always read them. And I get back to you guys as soon as I can whenever I don't work too much. Thanks, Emily, and everyone. Have an awesome day. Enjoy your steampunk cards.